Hello class. If you encounter a Dills-Alder reaction in which your diene is not symmetrical and your dienophile is also not symmetrical, then there are some regiochemical uh, considerations that need to be made. And when we do this Dills-Alder reaction, you can see that we have two different types of products here. This is the major one and this one would be a minor one. And what's the big difference? It's the regiochemistry. You see the electron, the substituents on the dienophile right there compared to that. So when you have these relationships, okay, these isomers of one another, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a special name. So when the outside group, okay, and the, the substituents on the dienophile, okay, right there, when they are adjacent to each other in the product, do you see how this group is attached to that carbon and then those groups are attached to that carbon? When they are adjacent like that, we call that ortho. The substituents are ortho to one another. When you see that there's a gap here, so the substituents are one, two, three carbons away from each other, then we call that meta. All right. And I'm just going to use these terms to describe the regiochemistry of the substituents and where they're at. Okay. Now, why is there going to be these isomers here? Why? Well, it's once again, the orientation slash approach of the dienophile towards the diene. And that's shown right here. When the dienophile is in this orientation, it's going to add in the ortho way. But then if you just take this dienophile and flip it 180 degrees to look like this, right there, do you see now how the substituents are now meta? Okay. And the meta position is the minor product. Now, why is this the case? Well, simply put, it's electrostatics. And this, the ortho product, is going to give us the stronger electro electrostatic t attractions. And in the meta, there's not as many electrostatic uh, interactions that are good. So I'm going to show you in the next slide um, how to view that and so we can understand why the ortho is favored. But there is a rule okay, that helps us figure out the regiochemistry and it's called the ortho-para rule. Ortho-para rule. Okay. And the ortho-para rule is this, that when you have a Dills-Alder reaction, okay, the major product is always going to be ortho or para. Now I haven't shown you what para is yet, but the meta is rarely, if ever, going to be the major product. So if it's ortho or para, well, that's the react. That's the product you're going to get as the major product. Okay. Now let me go to the whiteboard and show you, in general terms, what ortho, meta, and para look like. Okay. So let's just say we have an electron donating group plus our dienophile with an electron withdrawing group. Okay. If we do that reaction, what are we going to get? The regiochemistry or the orthopara rule says that the electron donating group 
and the electron withdrawing group <coughs> needs to be ortho. So that's ortho. So that's a recap. Okay. You could have also gotten this product, the electron donating group, the electron withdrawing group, and that is our meta. Okay. And that does not form as the major product. But what if you had a diene with the electron donating group on that carbon? Okay. And you have that fills all the reaction there. I'm going to draw the reaction arrow down here. Okay. What can you have here? You can have the Dills Alder product that looks like this donating group and the electron withdrawing group. Well, those are three carbons away. One, two, three. So that is meta. And the metas are not formed as the major product. But this reaction. Okay. could also give us this product. Electron donating group and the electron withdrawing group. Now when those substituents are four carbons away, we call that para. So the para and ortho groups are favored due to stronger um, electrostatic interactions than the meta. Okay. So if you can remember that rule, the ortho-para rule, that will help you with the regiochemistry and you'll be golden. Now let's just delve a little bit deeper into why that's the case. And I said it's electrostatics and that when we do that, we just have to look at lots and lots of resonance structures. Okay, so in this top one right here, okay, we're taking a look at the diene and we're looking at all a few of the resonance structures. Okay, and I'm highlighting the electron rich carbons. Okay, there's the electron rich carbon there and there. And so the resonance hybrid looks something like this. And so when we form our bonds here, you can see on the dienophile that we have partial positives over in shown in blue. And negative and a positive, that's an electrostatic interaction that's very favorable. And that, that interaction can only occur when we are going to generate the ortho product. But when you look at the Another resonance structure of the dienophile, or sorry, if you take the dienophile and flip it 180 degrees, okay, to see how the approach has less electrostatic interactions, they're not as favorable, and it has to do with the proximity. Look how close these two groups come, in, come to each other in the transition state compared to this okay so it's just all electrostatics and so this same explanation is going to apply for the para if you look at all the resonance structures or just look at the resonance hybrid when you're looking at the product that will form para you will see the same thing so that's the rationale behind it now what i want to do is put this all together Let's take the regiochemistry and the stereochemistry and do it all at once and see what we come up with. Okay. So let's take a look at this diene right here. Okay. We're going to treat that with our dienophile that looks like this. Okay. So what is our product going to be? Well, there's many ways you can approach this. So we know we're going to form the six-membered ring. Okay. We're, we know we're going to have our methyl group there. And the ortho-para rule tells us that the 
the electron withdrawing group on the dienophile is going to be ortho to the uh, electron donating group. Okay, So that means we're going to put it like this. Okay. Let's see. So we got the regiochemistry down, but now what about the stereochemistry? Okay. And the general rule to figuring out the stereochemistry is that the, now write this down, okay, I'm going to read it to you, the general rule. The outside substituents on the diene and the electron withdrawing group on the dienophile are on the same side of the ring in the product. So that says the electron or the outside group on the dienophile, sorry, the outside group on the diene, and the electron withdrawing group on the dienophile are going to be on the same side in the product. So that means we could say, hey, that's going to be a wedge, and that's going to be a wedge. Right. And then we could have the enantiomer where it looks like this. Just like that. Okay. That's what we're going to get. We will not get this type of product. Why would we not get that type of product right there? Because it's meta. And that is, does not happen. Okay, so we have some general rules. And when we come to class, we're going to go through some more examples and practice problems to make sure we get this right and get this down pat. Okay? Now, when you look at these two products here, they are enantiomers of one another. Now, which one would be favored? Okay, well, let me take this back. Which one is XO? And which one is endo? When we look at those two products there. Well, remember in the previous video when I said that the inside groups right here, that relationship between the inside group and the substituents or the electron withdrawing group on the dienophile, where are they in relationship? spatially or on the ring. Well, our inside hydrogens right here, okay, let's look at it this way here. Let's look at it right there, okay. There's our inside hydrogen right there. So what's the, and that hydrogen right there is the inside group right here, right. So when we look at that hydrogen there, and that electron withdrawing group there, we see that they are on opposite sides of one another. Okay, so that is endo. Now, what do you think about this one on the left? We have our dashed hydrogen there. They're on opposite sides as well. So that is also endo. Okay. So that would be the major product. Now, what would the exo product look like? The exo product would take this guy right here and turn it into a wedge. And okay, now that is exo. 
But recall that I just gave you a general rule, which I'll read it to you again because it's so important. The outside substituents on the diene and the electron withdrawing group on the dienophile are on the same side of the ring in, in the product. Okay, So that is definitely the exo, and this is our endo. Okay, But we have learned that the endo products are favored. So we can get two endo products that are in antimers to each other. 